Hi there, everybody. This is John Drew here from Elevated Planet. And Jolay Gabrielle here from Elevated Planet. And we'd like to welcome you to another Sunday edition of our live show. And today we're going to go into something that is a little fantastic, a little bit of whimsy. It is a side arm sort of of Elevated Planet known as the Twiglet Zone. And John is going to tell us more about it. Thank you. Thank you, Jolay. Yes, uh, the Twiglet Zone is uh, fantastical stories accompanied by a savory snack. So this is when we test the boundaries of your reality. And so this is this is subject matter, which is fantastical, but true. OK, now we honor the fact that some people will not be able to accept this as a version of their reality. And that's perfectly OK, in which case you can think of it maybe as a sci fi version of reality, but just store it away for the future, because if things happen around you that encourage you to change your version of reality at some point, you've got something to step into. So this is why. The, uh, the, the we use the twiglet zone because this is when we know we are pushing those boundaries. Now, not for everybody. There'll be quite a few people here who are already in tune with this. So um, and, you know, one of the things I always say is may, make sure you strap on your CRH, which is your cranial retention helmet. And interestingly enough, I was just having an exchange with uh, my friend Leslie, who was at the retreat in Sedona. Uh, who has just got back home to Costa Rica. And so she's back there now. And uh, she sent me this picture. I'm just going to share this with you very quickly because this is exactly what you need. And there it is. There's Leslie with her cranial retention helmet. So there will be no clearing up of the mess, even if we blow her mind. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, delighted to have you with us today. We've already got Michelle Cordy. Hello, Michelle. We've got you on, got a little bit of Michelle's work on our Elevated Planet Weekly next week, actually. She's with us from the East Coast of America. And we've actually got, we've got um, the High Priestess Anita from over in Italy. And then we've got Leslie saying hello all from Costa Rica. So we're we're covering the globe. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Welcome to everybody and thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Keep Truly an honor, right? To have them a viewing and thank you so much for tuning in. Exactly right, Jolie. And uh, yeah, we're honored to have you with us for the journey. And uh, we are going to just uh, see where we can take this because... I think a fair few people will be familiar with the concept of QHHT. And it was Dolores Cannon who created and perfected this going back, starting in the 1980s and working her way forward. She passed in 2014, but not before she had chance to train a few thousand around the world to pick up on QHHT and follow on in her stead. One of those that did that is a lady called Sarah Breskman Cosme. And she has been writing books very much in the line of where following on from Dolores. And it's quite interesting because Dolores has even come through during some of her regression therapy to sort of like support her and say, yeah, we're working with you. So, you know, again, fantastical stories um, accompanied by a savory snack. And this is what Sarah is doing now. And we are leaning into one of her books and this is, uh, we're just taking, in fact, uh, Jolie and I will be doing a series based off this particular chapter because there's some, there's a lot of amazing information. The one that we are covering today is very much about suppressed information, which is going to be coming to light. So we're obviously sharing it with you now, but there will be official sources where this will come forward one way or another over the next few months and the next few years. So it's good to put it out there now. And as I say, if it overly stretches your version of reality, simply think of it as a sci-fi story and store it away for later. Um, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to be tapping into that. And uh, I suppose, Jolie, is there anything you want to add before we uh, begin that process? No, nope. let's roll.
Chapter 10 Uncovering Suppressed Information I wanted to delve deeper into the suppressed information that was resurfacing through my clients deep under hypnosis. To get a broader perspective of this information, I had Fred come in for another session. There was a time when the earth was split and humans had to go in all different directions. The idea was to see how they would separate in order to eventually come back together at one point. But this information has all been lost. There are many tales of this occurring that originated from blue beings coming to earth and talking to the tribes about this. Where did the beings come from? A lot of the beings came from all over, but the blue beings that the indigenous tribe talked about are from either Sirius or the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters. What did the blue beings look like? They looked almost like the universe, in light form. They were also what you would describe as an ascended master being. So, essentially, an ascended master being is all that is, but not creator himself. They were beings who have ascended to that reality where they can be anything and everything, at any time. Sometimes the beings coming to earth would communicate telepathically, or sometimes they would communicate through light. The indigenous tribes had a basic understanding and even had tools to understand the different lights that they would give off. Some of the ascended master beings would communicate through the harmonic light 144 pattern, which appears everywhere in our world and nature. The harmonic 144 is a phi ratio and a repeating pattern indicative of the holographic nature of our reality. This number can explain how all of nature can be broken down into this energy. This number. This ratio. This harmonic 144 pattern is so powerful that it has already proven to provide free energy and anti-gravity capabilities. This has already been done on Earth using reverse engineering with extraterrestrial devices. Can you tell me about the pyramids all over the Earth? There are pyramids all over the Earth. Under the Earth. Even on the ocean floor built on central points of energy, pyramids transmit energy and information and broadcast this information back, just like the Sphinx. Is there a relationship between this harmonic 144 pattern and the spring equinoxes? There is. The equinoxes are gateway openings to the spirit world and to the galactic universe. Many beings could communicate with humans during the times of the equinoxes, because during those times there was a thinning of the veil, and therefore there would also be portal openings. If the equinox falls on a specific energetic portal date, then it repeats itself around the world where those energy portals are open. Some humans already have an understanding about this, but this information is being kept from the masses by a secret level of humanity. This secret level of humanity already understands natural portals, and they have built bases around them to understand the natural physics of these portals, and how to make them into machines that they can use. What do you mean when you say secret levels of humanity? There's a group of corporations, not necessarily governments, that have the ability to work on these reverse engineering projects, more than the military can, because the corporations can do it more secretly. The military has lots of paper trails to leave behind when they do things. So these secret corporations have been working on higher technology for their own gain and to make a profit off of it, instead of just letting everybody have this information and these technologies. How do they use it for profit? By slowly releasing things for profit. They can control how fast society grows and even what level it grows into. Unlike the indigenous cultures who helped one another and shared information freely, there is a group of corporations hiding valuable information constantly from the public at this time. Where are the corporations located? Are they located on these harmonic 144 vortexes? No, those places are usually for study of dimensional travel. It's very dangerous what is done there, and most of those places are built under national parks. But they're built under ley line points where the energy meets from one direction to another. Some of these secret corporations have bases that are underwater, underground, or even up in mountains. What do these secret corporations really want? Many within that society are chasing immortality and are obsessed with power and greed. 
However, there is a division happening in that community, as there are now some that want to better humanity's future. As humanity shifts, all this will be known. So I want to take a moment here just to talk through the work of Dr. Stephen Greer. Much of what is talked about in this book is corroboration to exactly where Stephen Greer is coming from with all these things. So he presented to Congress. As a result of that, they have put whistleblower protection in place. Uh, it's taken a while and the uh, extra piece has only just been ratified very recently. And that was the reason why a number of whistleblowers wouldn't step forward was because uh, from these corporations and from the government area who know about these operations, they're under non-disclosure agreements. However, when that non-disclosure agreement is with an illegal party, it does not stand in law, naturally. It's also very interesting to note that there has been a lot of efforts to not let this happen which just tells you the level at which this infiltrates deep into government. So this bit tells you that the whistleblower tells Congress the U.S. is concealing multi-decade program that captures UFOs. These are from the presentation. Two primary types of UAPs, which are unidentified aerial phenomena, extraterrestrial vehicles and man-made ARVs, which are alien reproduction vehicles, or electrogravitic propulsion vehicles. And then the second point, extraterrestrial groups are not hostile to Earth or humanity. However, they are increasingly concerned about human hostility and weapon systems, nuclear, scalar, etc. Extraterrestrial technology has been studied and reverse engineered, leading to breakthroughs in energy and propulsion. Number four, an extremely secret organization has been running these projects without legal constitutional government oversight since the late 1950s. Number five, these illegal projects constitute a grave threat to national security and world security and peace. Number six, key members of U.S. government oversight committee have been denied access to the projects, which is a crisis we are working to resolve. Point number seven, the technologies held by this unsanctioned illegal operation would immediately solve the world's energy, environmental and poverty crises. Number eight, these organizations also have been targeting and on occasion successfully down ET vehicles. Number nine, this covert group has technologies to launch a convincing false flag operation detrimental to national security. And we've spoken about this uh, on elevated planet at some length and number 10 these actions pose an immediate and grave threat to world security and need to be reined in immediately number 11 crimes against humanity worldwide referral to international court for crimes committed by illegal covert projects and number 12 we applaud current actions by the u.s congress to investigate the uap matter crimes committed by illegal covert ufo related projects and we're just going to run down this disclosure project witnesses and gathered intelligence has established the following major crimes treason murder mass murder torture kidnapping and abduction embezzlement of government funds embezzlement of private funds bank fraud money laundering illegal surveillance insubordination and insurrection against the united states false imprisonment, witness and whistleblower intimidation, theft of intellectual property, trespassing, burglary, framing of innocent people, government corruption, blackmail, bribery, illegal use of government and military property, and many more. Anybody familiar with Stephen Greer's films, movies, documentaries will be familiar with all of these and have seen the evidence that backs this up. So we are just going to Take a brief pause on this now. First of all, none of this is really intended to scare anyone. It's in fact, it's it's an opportunity to get excited because this is the kind of thing that we have to get through in order to clear the way for this new age of unity, unity consciousness that we are, are stepping into. And in fact, has been in in place since the 22nd of December 2012, when this next 13,000 year cycle began. But there is a 
period of time where the transition takes place. And certainly the old guard are reluctant to let up their uh, their hold. So we go through this now, and it's, uh, it's, it's only a matter of time before the divine feminine energy of the new age steps forward and starts to press ahead. And this is going to be the, the age of, it's been known, it's the age of Aquarius, it's the golden age of the golden race, it's a thousand years of peace. All these things that are looking to look forward to for those that are able to take the the jumping consciousness, if you like, because there is going to be a split. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more. I'm just going to very briefly run through a few of the action points that I put down for the on the invitation. Uh, I mentioned about a galactic link to Drumvalo Melchizedek and the indigenous people. So that link to the indigenous people where the, the folks from Sirius, uh, the Pleiades or wherever actually engaged with indigenous folks around the world. And it's interesting, actually, because Drumvalo's work was all about this. That was the reason he came. And he actually came to the planet care of 15 years spent on Sirius and uh, a time spent with the Pleiadians before he came to Earth. And he's here on a, on a divine mission to help move this transition forward. And in fact, has done so because most of his work took place quite some time ago. But uh, nevertheless, it was important work that needed to be done. Um, the free energy and anti-gravity control that's been mastered and suppressed. Again, Stephen Greer has talked about this at, at length, and I think it was back in 1956 in the U.S. Naval Laboratories where they actually mastered, reversed engineered the anti-gravity technology. And since then, they have had those um, alien reproduction vehicles that do masquerade quite convincingly as um, as ufos you would think of them as as alien craft because it doesn't go along with any of the technology which has been released so clearly you know there's been an awful lot of suppression and the other thing i think worth mentioning is that we talked about non non-disclosure agreements and the fact that if the non-disclosure agreement is with an illegal secret level of government or with a corporation which is being run illegally those non-disclosure agreements don't actually count for anything in law, which is important. But more importantly still, these, these whistleblowers have to be protected because their lives are threatened and their families' lives are threatened when they step forward with these things. So there has to be a level of government which is intimately involved with this to make sure they have adequate protection that uh, when they're stepping forward. And they've stepped forward in their hundreds. I, I don't know what the actual number is. The last number I heard was somewhere approaching about 900 different whistleblowers from corporations and secret levels of government who were prepared to testify to some degree. Uh, maybe a hundred and something of them were prepared to testify to Congress. Um, uh, but, you know, it, again, it takes a brave soul to not just put yourself at risk, but, you know, knowing that these threats come to your family as well. Uh, so there's been a lot of suppression. And the challenge for us is that we are brought up to believe this world around us is the way it's supposed to be with all its density, with the wars, with all this kind of thing. A lot of this can be associated back to the military industrial complex, which really makes money through the fact that they are perpetrating wars. So they are the warmongers. That's, that is part of what they do because that's how they make money. That's how, and you know, this is not about humanitarianism. This is about the era that is gone. This is the Piscean era. This is the one about lies and distortion and control and greed and separation. Whereas the age that we are now in is that divine feminine. It is that unity consciousness that we're stepping into. And it's a beautiful thing because from that will come our world of unspeakable beauty. So Jolie, what would you care to add? Hi, yes, I I really, you, what you said was fantastic, but I'd also like for people to understand that for those of you that are like, uh, I don't know about that, uh, what we're trying to do is expand your container. So regardless of whether you believe in some of this or not, it's just about opening your mind so that even within you, you're more expansive as to what you can do. Also, there's so much zombie energy going around meaning we need to wake up and understand that we have the power to protect ourselves from these things to say that if we don't want the, these invasions into our, our, 
our spiritual life or our physical lives. We don't want to open ourselves up to experience anything but the divine creator. That is also a possibility, and we're here to teach you how. But in the meantime, please open up your mind to possibly understanding that there's more than just us. Maybe um, it's important for us to learn what's going on with our government and in the so-called deep state <laughs> so that we can get even more connected to who we truly are, our deepest power, and we can connect with that power collectively. So when you talk about unspeakable beauty, it's just like, I, I heard there's this quote or this, um, I guess, phrase I heard that you want to have the fear or the burning fear to where you get out of bed each morning to add value. You don't get, you don't stay in bed and pull the covers over your head. So we come from a place of giving you the knowledge. We step into understanding so that we can stand on wisdom. So that's why we're here. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Jolay. And I would also make the point that uh, this goes well beyond the U.S. government as well. This is not most of this goes on and it's not got any U.S. government oversight whatsoever, which is part of the reason that Stephen Greer has done this work to uh, actually tell government what this is really all about. And that is why the whistleblower protection has gone in place. That is why hearings are being made at, uh, in Congress. But it's also interesting that the, uh, the the national press are not really covering it very much at all. And there's a reason for that, because they know that when the national press don't cover it, that most people don't take it that seriously. The bottom line is that the national press is pretty much controlled, not just in, in the United States, but around the world. It is largely controlled by these entities that uh, are there doing the things that we would rather they didn't. So, you know, you just have to use a lot of discretion. As we always say, we use a lot of discretion about what you take as your truth and whether that comes from Elevated Planet, whether that comes from mainstream TV. You know, you just got to be very guarded about what you accept. And if it's not working for your higher, if it's pushing you towards fear, then that's the time to really take a step back and think about this. Why are these people trying to make you afraid? That is a, a key thing. So what do you think, Jolie? I came back on to tell you that like there's a light that just like came down and you were talking and it was it like I don't know if you have a sunroom and then it like flickered and you went back to normal and then there's this light. So, I mean, it was beautiful. I just came back to say that. <laughs> Thank you. I think I was being possessed by angels there for a moment. You know, always happens. But there you go. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Jolay. And now we're going to carry on with that clip because we have yet more to uncover there. And where we left off before we got into the Stephen Greer piece, we were talking about the shift in consciousness that is happening for mankind. This is an important part that's coming up now. So bear with me a second. I am going to get that up and running. When is the shift? The approach of the shift is always moved around by the consciousness thinking about it. So the dates could always change. As soon as we get to a certain point, though, the divide will be clear as to who wants to be here for the betterment of all and who will be stuck in the TV world of news and wars that they're going to create. Some will shift and some will stay with the wars. If you do shift, does it literally feel like you're going into a different place or does it just feel the same? There will be some obvious signs for some people, but some people won't even know the shift happened. Only the ones paying attention are going to notice a difference. You'll be able to see who's in what dimension. There will be a lot of help from the star people. For the humans that will be here for the wars and chaos, is this only because they're focused on the media? Mostly, yes, because that's where most of the manipulation of the mind is coming from. Magazines, television, and newspapers can twist the mind and thoughts. By controlling the direction of the people that believe that to be the truth, that is their truth, and so that will be their destiny. Humans need to understand that they each create their own reality, and by allowing others to tell them what is true, it becomes their truth. Is there any advice for humans? It is time for humanity to understand how powerful they are. It's time for humanity to free themselves from the chains that have been placed upon them. There is so much help for every human from the star people to guide them to the right place and the right time. 
Why was there a triangle-shaped craft hovering over the Pentagon? Was this a UFO? That was man-made technology by a subset of your government that was made by using reverse engineering of extraterrestrial crafts. This is a craft that can go underwater, in the air, and out in space. It's a very silent craft, more like a stealth operations craft, and not a warcraft. The idea of showing this to humans was to get them accustomed to it. That is what this subset of government does most of the time. They have some other projects too, including the cloning of the gray alien bodies and some reptilians. They use these clones to conduct their own abduction scenario. However, it's much more aggressive and violent than the actual extraterrestrial contact situation. This subset of the government is trying to do the same things that the actual greys would do, except this abduction is happening against the humans' will. How can you tell if you're being abducted by a government-cloned grey? Is there a sign? Yes, it's about how they treat you. The actual gray extraterrestrials are kind. They are just curious, and they would not hurt you, and it's a voluntary experience. The actual gray aliens do not have guns and don't have military personnel on their ships. What can you do if you're being abducted by the secret level of government? A human can ask for help from their star family. Sometimes help won't arrive unless a human asks. What does the government want from doing this? This is very similar to the experimentation done in Atlantis, in that this subset of government is trying to make a super soldier type being and weaponize a genetic program by creating beings as weapons, whether it be animal hybrids with technology that are dropped into a war or a literal human style clone mixed with extraterrestrial genetics to make them super soldiers. In that way, this secret level of government can have people piloting these beings around and not expending real soldiers, but still fighting a war. I met a woman who was being abducted by one of these government programs. What kind of advice would you give her? First, to ask for help. But if you find yourself in a base, they will take you back eventually. There are some women who are used in these places to give birth to cloned hybrid beings within these underground facilities. This is very difficult and unfortunate for those involved against their will because these projects involved with cloning and experimentation with the birthing processes are truly gruesome, just as they were in Atlantis. How does this subset of government choose who they will take and experiment on? It depends on the experiment. They often look for people who would not be missed and do not have family, sometimes immigrants who are not allowed to speak up for legal reasons but are an easy target as well. It really depends, but the best thing to do is to ask for help. Your star family, angels, whatever you call them, can't help you unless you ask. This is so similar to Atlantis. Why is this? Time is a spiral, and we're hitting that point again. But this time, even though it is chaotic, humanity is evolving, and the shadow is coming to light. How will people start finding out about the things that have been covered up, like the bases that you were talking about? Everything will be divulged as the veil thins. There will be opportunities for open contact with extraterrestrial species, and starseeds all over the world are starting to remember who they are and are starting to share the unified messages and concepts that they each bring to the Earth. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, talk to you briefly before we switch this down again for a moment. Um, this book here and this lady, Charmaine de Rosario Sage, um, I was put in contact... And we're going to just put that on pause for a moment. Um, so Charmaine, I was in touch with her by email and we had a, an email exchange and we are going to do an interview at some point. I was connected to her through the wonderful Faye Vale, who is sadly no longer with us, uh, albeit she is with us in spirit on the Elevated Planet journey. But she put me in touch originally with Charmaine to arrange an interview and Charmaine was very open to this. But the thing is with Charmaine is that she has reptilian DNA, which, again, from a Twiglet Zone perspective, is, uh, you know, another fantastical story. The government have used her within these programs and she's in the UK. You know, she looks like just any other human being, as you could see from the original picture. Now, she was taken to a military base. She knows on that one military base she's got three children and she believes she has three other children. And in that book, 
There it is. Meet the Hybrids, a fascinating book. So much like that book by Sarah that is very much recommended. This one also by Miguel Mendonca, and I've interviewed Miguel in the past, and Barbara Lamb, who was another person who worked very closely with Dolores Cannon. Uh, the Meet the Hybrids is a series of interviews with people who identify as hybrids, and their stories are incredible. And Charmaine's is one of those stories. The chapter that she has in chapter nine, for those who are interested, it's quite harrowing, you would say, because much like they said within this actual video clip, it's not a pleasant thing. What is done to them is not pleasant at all. You would say Charmaine has a, a very strong character and a strong ability to, to basically withstand everything that she's been put through and to thrive regardless. So... Anyway, she is one of the good guys out there who is looking to raise attention to these things that are happening, along with a bunch of other people who have stepped up, uh, whether it's uh, this book which by Miguel, which was the Meet the Hybrids, or there's Being with the Beings, and there is another one as well, which all goes into this kind of true stories about, you know, whether they're walk-ins or whether they are actually ET, they've got ET DNA. So I just wanted to read it to you very briefly, the response that came from Charmaine. She agreed to do the interview, but we just haven't been able to find the time yet. But this was her, her paragraph, which I think is just worth reading to you directly. Certainly, planting seeds and nurturing growth is very important, as well as being there for support when people awaken to reality and their full potential. The pandemic was an interesting time, blissful for some and very difficult for others, and some are still struggling now. To say it is only the tip of the iceberg would be a serious understatement and certainly interesting times to come. Collaboration, connection and community are more vital now and going forward than ever before. Much has been forced on the masses in the last few years to divide and conquer. The pandemic, vaccines, masks, rationing, food and fuel price increases, cost of living increase and so on. It is a very important time to make a stand. Decide what type of being and life you want to have. And if you will fully commit to what you have signed up for, put faith in your team and your soul family. For some, it will be the last straw to break the camel's back, as the saying goes. For others, release them into a freedom that they have never known. Those of us now signed up to this, we must step up to our missions that we chose. Easier said than done at times, of course but we are all vital to the bigger picture and plan of the multiverses. So that came for, with galactic blessings from Charmaine. I do hope to speak to her at some point, and I do recommend this book. So I'll just play out this little, last little section here, then I'm going to bring Joe Lay in. Just bear with me. And I'm back in the room. So, yeah, that's that's it. It's, uh, you know, again, I would say with all these things, judge for yourself. Check out the research for yourself. If you, you know, I, it's it, it makes sense because it's always easier to really understand and believe things once you've done your own research, um, you know, and there is time for discretion at this point. So I would always recommend these books. And I'm going to just add one little thing before I bring in Joe Lake which comes down to one of the points that was made within that last section, which is all about what happens when things go wrong. It's a, to, you have to ask. It's all about free will. You know, we have free will on this planet. And unless we ask, we all have these teams of guides, angels, um, you know, and, and our past family who've moved over to the other side. They're all here to help us. But because we have free will, they are not allowed to help us unless we ask, right? Now, here's a book, another book for you to consider, okay? It's called Infinite Life, Infinite Lessons by a wonderful lady called Susan Grohl. Now, I know Susan because back in 2018, she was the one who uh, gave a, a reading, a psychic medium reading to a left brainer who thought it was all woo-woo nonsense. That was me. That that reading transformed my life because I knew when I left that room, I would never be the same again because I realized how wrong I'd been. And then I had to just delve into six and six plus years of research so far to find out how wrong I'd been and how much more expansive this world is 
and how ah honestly is so much better so much better than i realized and, you know we're all creators we can do so much so that triggered susan triggered me on this this book is brilliant if anybody's looking for a kind of guide as to what this life is really about i recommend this susan had a, a near-death experience when she was just four and a half years old it was it's very vividly recalled uh it's a very honest open book it's um it, it you know Susan's been very brave, putting out the, the information she has. And, uh, you know, I would applaud her for everything that she's put in there, because not only is it exceptionally readable, but it is really, really tells people how life really is structured. So well done, Susan. And we will be interviewing Susan sometime soon as well. So we can actually bring something, bring Susan to, to, to whether it's the Twiglet zone or whether we bring her into the elevated planet live, we will see how that all pans out. But, but anyway, that's a recommendation. Now, Jolay, any comments on that last little section? Absolutely. You know, when you talk about being a left brainer, I get it because at some point, even with this information, we have to back it up with science so that the left brain can relax the body and the body can heal. So it's always really about bringing in. So don't ever, you know, doubt the fact that something is going, hmm, I side eye and scratch my head at that. I need more. That's right. Continue to dig. That's what we're trying to do. We're just scratching the surface and we're asking you to think about these things and get curious instead of judgmental about what you're going through. But more than anything, work with your own energy first. Ground yourself. You know, if you're like, look, I don't know about all that. Well, then deepen your connection to humanity. Right. Yes. Deepen your connection to those around you. And that's what I'm here for. That's what we're here for is to tell you, hey, look over here for a second. But at the same time, we want you to deepen your connection to your environment. That's what an unspeakable beauty is all about. And if you don't know where to begin, begin with you. That's it. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Yeah. And you know what? I'm so grateful. Uh, again, th there's no accidents. Joe Lay. Uh, crossed my path back in uh, early 2020 before I came back to uh, live in the UK. That wasn't an accident, you know, because Jolay's knowledge, skill set, wisdom has been, you know, very complementary to my desire to research as a left brainer and represent the mainstream. Yes. And that's that's been absolutely perfect because, you know, Jolay has been steeped in this for decades and it is who she is. So I yeah. could not have, have uh, I've learned so much through you, Jolie. Thank you, John. Same here, same here. Because, you know, when you're a star seed or a, a being of light, you can get battered, but that's, but then you realize that's no excuse. You know, the, the spirit works through all of us. We have 24 hours in a day and <laughs> it's time to get busy, really waking up and empowering others. You know, we spend so much time being batteries for other institutions or energies when we really can be batteries for ourselves and our own development to further love transformation and connection with mother earth. We, we, we speak about the creator, the divine creator so much, mm. but mother earth that's beneath our feet, she is powerful. She has so much spiritual energy to give us. That's why we ground our energy. So always remember that, although there's these fantastical things out there in the clouds and in the heavens, right here, right now is your heaven, is your positive energy, is your is your good. Yeah, and you know, that's a, it's such a, valid, a valuable point as well, because when you go back to the wisdom of the ancients, right, the indigenous people who've never lost that connection to Mother Earth, right, they've held that all the way from the 13,000 years ago when unity consciousness was more of a thing. Um, they've managed to understand that, you know, even though the, a lot of them have been treated as, as if they're primitives, the reality is that they get something that we don't. They understand that we are part of Mother Earth and that Mother Earth can help us. And, and you know, I'll just share this with you, uh, with the audience as well, Jolay, because um, one of the things that we do every week is uh, Jolay does a deep dive into mother earth where we do a meditation and it's fascinating Correct. because we dive down the grounding cord together and she gets these amazing visuals <laughs> from within mother earth who gives us advice and guidance right jolie that is correct 
And it came to me, you know, when we were doing all of this, going up into the plane and getting heavenly information, it was sort of like, well, it's all around you. You know, sacred geometry, it's hard to look up and kind of see it. But you look around you into Mother Earth and the Fibonacci sequence, sequence the golden mean, all of this magic, you're sitting in it. Yes. So uh when I, you get it? So I, when I talk about zombie energy, that's what I mean. Like, like wake up, be grateful. The moment that you are grateful and and pour gratitude, you know, connect with that energy, you zing, you, you start to zoom in to all of the magic that's around you and Mother Earth. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and I just wanted to share some comments that have come from Michelle, actually. Um, Michelle Cordy. She said, amen to starseeds sharing our knowledge. We can't suppress who we are. We have a role to play, be the light and the love. And I know Michelle is a starseed. Very much. <laughs> and she also then added, the pandemic awakened me. Blessed for the journey, although very hard. And then finally, what was the name of the book again, please? It was uh, Meet the Hybrids. Check out the books of Miguel Mendonca. He identifies as what we call a wanderer, which is he's moved about the universe, the multiverse in a variety of roles over the years. And this time around, he's Miguel and he's, he's helping to shine a light on all these different things that need to be seen by humanity right now. And it was due to him that I met Faye in the first place and uh, so many other people. And Faye introduced me to a bunch of people as well. So, you know, Miguel's been a very important uh, catalyst for me and for Elevated Planet, really. So, yeah, Infinite Life author, please, says Michelle. Right. OK, we have Susan Graw, highly recommended. Uh, Susan's book is brilliant. She's a wonderful person. And uh, definitely comes very much recommended. Susan Graw is also available on audio. I actually have it on both, just to be sure. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really good. It's well worth the investment, put it that way. So, uh, yeah, you know, we, when we're talking about the pyramids in the first section, uh, from what I understand through Drumvalo Melchizedek, you know, there are, in his work, there are 83 thousand sacred sites around the, the world many of whom many of which are pyramids and some of them will be by the sound of it underwater above water um and various other sacred sites as well but the whole principle of them is that they're on vortexes of energy and what they do is that they 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 create this toroidal field within this so, so in other words they have this vortex energy and that really accelerates energy. And what it does, it, it, it channels energy throughout the planet itself in a certain way. But what it does then is it projects that grid out above the Earth. So part of that was creating this unity consciousness grid that Dromvalo and the indigenous folks of the world were, were working on very hard around 2007 through to about 2012 to, to repair the grid because the masculine energy had been so fierce over the last few thousand years that it had really damaged the grid and because we needed to get the unity consciousness grid back in place then the divine feminine energy had to be brought back into that grid and that was a lot of the work they did through ritual and ceremony fantastical stuff right but when you read Drumvalo's work which i again always recommend Drumvalo's work it is fantastically is amazing but honestly it's totally from the heart he's been preparing the ground for us now going forward so um the et hybrid beings abductions military man manipulation and super soldiers absolutely one of the um you know i mean certainly the corporates even like uh the likes of steve greer will name names you know raytheon was the the picture of the craft that we zoomed up to during that video that was an artist's impression of something that would being created by raytheon corporation but again, these things are supposedly top secret, but because of the whistleblowers, we're now starting to get information coming through. And certainly Stephen Greer has been working on this for 30 years, so he's no spring chicken at that sort of thing. And the ley lines and vortices are very important to us going forward for when we uh, are looking to accelerate the consciousness of the planet. And that is where we are also working with Rory Duff to uh, help to create um, groups of people who can meditate at these sites and use that to accelerate our energy in a positive way and to start to create this amazing energy that is going to transform our world into a world of unspeakable beauty. However, if you don't ask for help, 
if you are stuck in the world of TV and wars and, and division energy and everything that is being thrown at you to distract you from your true power, then, you know, may that you may find that that is you're not at a point where you're ready for that, which is fine. There's no judgment against it. Whichever way you go is going to be right for you. But it's good to know that there is a divide, that there is something going on. There's a lot of manipulation and actually dig into it for yourself. What works for you is right for you. That's all I would say about it. Jolie, any additional thoughts on that? No, we're ready to lock in with humanity. It was a beautiful um, guidance that you gave me as to what to do for the meditation. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, right. Well, we are going to, what we're going to do now is we're going to share um, Dr. Bruce uh, Lipton, who is going to give us a bit of a precursor into Joe Lay's guided meditation visualization. So once we switch screens here, I am going to disappear right until the end because I'm going to leave Joe Lay to work her magic. Is that okay, Joe Lay? Absolutely. Thank you. Principles of science reveal something very important. That principle of science is this. Consciousness is creating our life experiences. I go, well, that sounds new agey. I go, no, this is not new agey. This is the primary principle of quantum physics. We are creators. This is a fact. Quantum physics says that, but now let me add one other fact. Epigenetics says the same thing because epigenetics says your consciousness is controlling your behavior and your genes. And so it's time to stop for a second and recognize where is your consciousness? What are you thinking about? Start thinking all those very positive thoughts, but don't try and tell the universe how it's gonna manifest. You think of the picture, let the universe get you there. And that's the most important lesson I've learned. I'm not telling the universe how I'm gonna get there. I'm just saying universe is where I wanna go and then the universe will take care of it. As always, I'd like for you to please put your feet flat on the floor, your palms face up on your thighs. And if you feel safe, please close your eyes. But if not, you can keep your eyes open. But for those of you laying down, please keep your feet flat on the floor or the bed or whatever you're laying on for the first part of the meditation. Take a deep breath in and exhale. As you bring your awareness to the center of your chest, I want you to create, visualize, and imagine your heart opening up like it would the lens of a camera and these beautiful hearts, like emojis, like you see when you like something or love something on social media. You're gonna send this energy out and into your aura layer. As you pull your aura layer to be a foot and a half around you, you're going to call your higher self back above your head to sit at a comfortable distance above your crown. As you ground your energy into Mother Earth with the grounding cord that's between your sit bones, six inches in diameter and of a natural earth element. Lately, I have been making my, my grounding cord one of golden rain, of a strong golden rain that goes all the way down through the crust, the lithosphere, traveling at the speed of love through the athenosphere as it roots itself into the core of Mother Earth. Visualize, create, and imagine a beautiful golden sun above your head. As you open your crown like you would the lens of a camera and you bring that golden sun, which is divine life force energy down, it morphs to where it can fit into your crown as if it's pouring in, filling up your mind and your cranium, dissolving and resolving any limiting beliefs, negative thoughts, any DNA that has disease, illness, viruses, resolving, dissolving that. Moving down the spine, lighting up each vertebra. As it moves down that grounding cord, super powering that gold light with transformative loving energy. As it roots itself into mother earth, solidifying your grounding cord and your connection to her nurturing energy, reality. 
Take a deep breath in, exhale. As you view all of these hearts have now surrounded the inside of your aura layer and it's just pulsating love back to you as now your aura layer is a sponge and this love begins to move out and through the layers. As you open your feet like you would the lens of a camera, the bottoms of your feet, you're gonna pull in this earth energy of a color that resonates with you. Is it the green and blue of a healing energy of Mother Earth, the healing waters? Is it the red of lava of creating new earth? Is it maybe the, I don't know, the blue of the sky? Whatever it is that you want, the green, the marine green, flat green, whatever healing energy you feel, bring that in as you command for gold light from the heavens to pour down and into your crown. As it moves throughout your body and they meet one another at that first chakra and begin to fill you up like water fills up a cup. And as this essence begins to move up and past your knees and into your thighs and your hips, moving up into all the systems in your body, the liver, the spleen, the gallbladder, the stomach, the colon, the reproductive organs, as it moves through the lungs, the heart, the aorta, the ribs, the thalamus, all the way up, bifurcating, going down into your hands, moving gold light into those joints as it moves up and into the brain, helping you love yourself more, have those snaps is firing in a way that keeps you sharp, and as it moves down into that limbic system and that reptilian energy, here we are, we're gonna work here. Because what we're trying to say is we are humans. And although we may have some DNA from other places, we wanna lock in with our humanity. For those of you who wanna connect with mother earth and the divine and that's it, I want you to go ahead and allow for this love to surround you and for you to say all of your cells and all of your energy, it is commanded that you are mine and I am a human and I am connected with this earth. I want to co connect with that. I protect my energy from any foreign invaders. If you are out there, I say, welcome to our planet. Nevertheless, don't tamper with me or mine. So protect your energy with love because love is the only thing that can transform and protect. So here in this reptilian energy, we say, hey, let's bring in some love. Let's bring in some humanity. Let's move out whatever reptilian energy causes us to be emotional cannibals and vampires. Uh-uh, no longer. We move that energy out and down our grounding cord. We let that cosmic gold light and that earth energy resolve and dissolve that. On a history level, cancel, pull, delete, soul corn, genetic sin to creator's light and replace with unconditional love for others and self and unconditional forgiveness as we command all the cells in our body to turn into love and heart shaped as we move that energy throughout all of the systems of our body and pushes out into our aura layer, this love, and make sure it goes into the back of you. See that as you move that energy throughout your body, that love is moving out any disease and any illness, moving out any triggers out of your aura layer, any bad relationships, doing that repair, bringing in forgiveness and love. As we move out, any of that reptilian, cannibalistic, vampiric energy that may magnetize and attract, making us a host. We say no longer. We are connected to the divine and we are connected to Mother Earth. And now we move our energy out and it is commanded our toroidal field, light up. Light up your toroidal field. It is your energy. Enough with the doubt, the worry, the fear, and the disbelief. Take back your power. We're going to put a golden sun above our head. And we're going to call back all of our energy from any people, places, and things 
anyone who has sucked our energy from us, our job, our experiences of our past, any of our genetic coding, our friends, we're calling all our energy back. Any of beings from other planets that may have tampered with our energy, we are putting you on notice. We are calling all of our energy back. We are protecting our energy from any malevolent interference. And we are empowering and energizing ourselves with love for humanity, love for Mother Earth, and love for all the positive energy and beings that want to help take us to unspeakable beauty and elevate this planet. Other than that, we cannot help you. So bring in that love, bring in that gold light, bring in that earth energy and let it mix in with the divine. Empower your frequency and vibration to only allow in positive transformation and love. Let go of that cannibalistic hosting energy. Golden sun above your head, I want you to bring it down into that limbic system, specifically showering that reptilian energy with love, with the right action to empower and connect us with humanity to move us into a place of unspeakable beauty in the highest and best way with grace and ease. So I want you to see that toroidal field. You see those ley lines of mother earth, see those ley lines within you. So you have your aura layer filled with love. And then you see this grid, this sacred geometry of the toroidal field engulfing your aura layer. And it is above the higher self. It is massive. Your ability to expand and connect with Mother Earth, it is massive. And it is sacred and divine. Light it up. And now, to protect this toroidal field and to connect it, with Mother Earth, I want you to create, visualize, and imagine a pyramid with a capstone above your toroidal field. And this pyramid has a light that beams up to the heavens and beams down through you into Mother Earth and lights up your entire toroidal field with gold light. And now you are locked in and connected to humanity and let those epigenetic energy of you and your power and your glory as a channel of light and blessings from the divine adding value to this universe pulsate around you. See yourself lighting up rooms, plants come to life. Animals love you. Babies are attracted to you. As you transform the energy around you with that of love, as you see Mother Earth and the universe align for your highest good and the highest good of those around you, as you open your heart and you share this energy with those around you. Run, vampires, run. <laughs> run because we sit here in love and we sit here in transformation. I want you to take a deep breath in, exhale, see yourself. I want you to see that capstone, that pyramid above your head. I want you to see that lit up and glorified, massive toroidal field that's your energy around you. As you see this beautiful aura layer, that's a foot and a half around you and filled with so much love. As you're rooted and grounded into Mother Earth with the grounding cord that is clean, clear, filled with gold light, bringing you into the present moment. As your higher self stands in the power position right above you, holographing positive life force energy, action, engagement, 
manifestation and alignment with all those laws of the universe. Stand in your power and your glory as a human. Take a deep breath in, exhale. And when you're ready, I want you to close your feet chakras like you would the lens of a camera, as well as your hands and your crown. You stop running energy. We're gonna let that energy settle and we're gonna stay lit up like a Christmas tree and grounded and rooted into mother earth with our heart open and our container expanded for our highest good and the highest good of those around us and for greater humanity, because that's why we're here. Take a deep breath in and it is commanded. We are all aligned with our positive purpose in the highest and best way with grace and ease. Thank you, it is done and so it is. So when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you, Joe, that was wonderful. I know that um, over in Costa Rica, they were having one or two uh, technical issues because the signal was coming and going a bit, but I believe everybody else was okay. You know, uh, Leslie was struggling over in Costa Rica, but honestly, that was beautiful. And one of the things that really made me think actually is when I was positioned under that pyramid, under the capstone of the pyramid, when I was in Sedona with Leslie, we were both staying at the same time with Soaring Eagle. Soaring Eagle. We all know Soaring Eagle. Okay. The hat. Beautiful uh, energy, of course. Um, but he has in his, uh, on his back balcony at the back where he has all the table chairs, a brilliant, beautiful place. But he has a pyramid with a capstone. Okay. Pyramid with a capstone that you can sit underneath. And everybody was taking it in turns. And in fact, when Leslie sent me an email last night, she sent me a picture looking up at the capstone under the pyramid at Soaring Eagle's backyard. Beautiful. <laughs> so, Synergy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, what can I say? I'm really grateful to, to you, Joe Lay, for, for, for doing this. And I am also grateful to the Elevated Planet community for being here today from uh, different corners of the of the world. And also, uh, you know, I think we'll we'll start to do the wrap up here now. But tomorrow we will be sending out the weekly and that has a little piece on there from Michelle, as well as a little bit more about the infinite life, infinite lessons uh, from Susan Graw and everything we've gone through today. So, Jolie, is there anything further that you would like to add? Just thank you so much. And I'm so grateful to be here, John. Thank you. And thank you to the Elevated Planet community for tuning in. And we do have, we always like to mention the NOS Populi for those of you that want to know more and stay connected. We have that there for you. Yeah. Thank you. And um, yeah. And Michelle has said thank you both. I am. I'm blessed to being uh, for being here and you know so you know I really do appreciate that and anybody yeah. and, and to that point as well anybody who wants to join our community who is not part of it or people you believe uh, would value it just send me an email john drew at elevatedplanet.life and we can soon add you to our distribution list and you can be yeah. part of this community too as well as please make sure to like, subscribe, and share whenever you can, because we'd love to grow with you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe Lay. That was very timely. Yes. Give us uh, one of these thumbs <laughs> up things and, uh, you know, any comments you want to add, they're always gratefully received. And yeah, other than that, I think that's it. Thank you, everybody, and see you next week. Bye. <laughs>